Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back again. Welcome back for another video. Welcome back to Dave's Dimension, the channel where chaos and insanity rules reign supreme. Um, back again for another video. Now what we're going to do today is, uh, if you've seen our previous videos, you know I've been working on a proton pack. Got a Beniken proton pack from the UK. Um, and the last update I did with the pack was in regards to, it's basically pretty much built. Now, I then took it apart for paint. Because when you put something together, you want to make sure that everything lines up correctly. You want to make sure you have the right uh, the right positions, the right holes, the screws and bolts. All the hardware that you're going to use is going to fit. Because you're not going to paint it first and then like, oh, geez, I have to mark this hole. Now I have to mark this. Some of those markings, some of those measurements may not be 100%. So now the paint that you just did gets ruined. So that's why you do a dry fit. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show the. Now, Benekent gives you. Now, the, what you do is it's not a pre made pack. There are parts that you have to measure. You have to drill. You have to put all the pieces together. Now, for the. We're going to start with some of the inside, okay? This is what's used for the cyclotron lights the red rotating lights that you see around the round part on the bottom of the pack. So what I did was, and I've done this with my Spirit. I will buy flashlights from the dollar store or the lowest price flashlights you can. Throw away the rest of the flashlight and just save the reflector part where the bulb goes into. It helps, one, it helps to line up the bulbs where they should go. And two, it helps to focus the light so it stays nice and bright. Now, the LEDs will go through these holes on the back here. Okay. And what I did was I did a little mixture. First, I tacked it with uh, hot glue to hold it in place. And then also, I used a little bit of E6000. This is an all-purpose adhesive that you can get just about anywhere. I mean, you could use epoxy. But this is, uh, this is a pretty good when you're in a pinch. It's called, let me put this up here, guys. It's called E6000. You can get this at Joanne's Fabrics, Michael's, Walmart, just about anywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. So a little mixture of both on here to hold it on nice and tight. Now, I threw a little decal from the, the Ghostbuster franchise I'm a part of. I have to add a little flair to it. And now, if you notice, I have some bolts here. This is what's going to go onto the motherboard okay these hold it in place so it's not going to go anywhere now you might be wondering why is it shaped like this well that's because now you can put your speaker right underneath and this will one protect and house your speaker towards the bottom part of the pack so i have that all set here and these are not going anywhere see so if if it's going to last you know, these are not going, I can't move them. So they're not going anywhere. But that's the little thing that I've done. A uh, bunch of other people do that. Or I know other uh, parts companies out there will even uh, give you a little template to take some, like take a soda can, cut it apart, use the foil from there, the aluminum on the inside, it may create your own little cup to do those lights. Um, I don't have the patience or the coordination to do that. <laughs> So that's my little cheats. Um, you can want to make sure you get your standard flashlight that's roughly about the size of a, you know, at least the height of a little Gatorade bottle. Because if you get one too small, then you're going to come up with a really small uh, reflector. Now I still need to get one more, and I have it coming in this week for my uh, vent lights. So now we're going to progress. I still need to take some uh, in a condensed air can and just give this good spraying here to clean everything out. So here's the shell disassembled. This is where my LED is going to come through and I'll have another reflector right here for the vent lights. Got the hole for the uh, shock mount and bumper. Everything else is properly. Now I have a couple holes here because unfortunately I put the injector tubes on backwards so I had to rotate and the correct holes there 
we have that there. Everything is pretty much set. The only thing that I haven't done yet is drill the holes for the various, uh, the gray elbows, the leg wrists, and the brass pieces that will connect all the hoses and everything together. I'm holding off on doing that because my concern is when I do the painting and the flatbed spray, I don't want the holes to be caked in because then I'm going to have to run through and cl clean those out. I'm going to have to run a drill through it again. And you don't want that. So you are you would actually be drilling twice. So that's why I'm holding off. And one of my teammates, uh, who's been helping me through this whole process, he actually uh, recommended that step as well. To do the painting, the bed liner spray, and then do those. You, basically, you want to go a step down from the actual size. So that you have the hole there. And then you can kind of hand thread the hole with that piece which I've done on my spare pack before. Now the ion arm is permanently on here because I use some epoxy and also it's bolted on there. So even if I took those bolts out this is not going anywhere. Now with the epoxy some of the epoxy did run on here guys so I took a little sanding paper smoothed it out so you can't see anything running out there. Now these pieces do have a little bit of molding to it so, I mean, I could leave that as my full weld, but I'm probably going to apply a little bit of hot glue, just a little, some little trickling along the sides, let that harden, and then when I do the paint spray, that'll cover it up. I am I do have black hot glue. I do have black hot glue uh, sticks that would actually work perfectly for this. Um... And I might touch up, might do a little bit of weathering with some uh, silver argent is what I usually use on the weathering. Um, now what I also did was, of course I already sanded all the resin pieces before I put them on. Uh, some people recommend doing a wash and a second sanding on some of these pieces so that the paint will adhere to it much better. That's something you can do. Now, me being the crazy guy that I am, I separated everything. What do I mean by that? I mean, I literally put the hardware and pieces of everything and labeled it. Filler tubes. And I painted, uh, just put in black to remind me that I have to paint these black, which kind of goes without saying. Um, also, I did have an accident, guys. Um, if you watched the previous video, I think I might have mentioned that one of these was actually cracked. So this is the one that was cracked. It actually was cracked from here to here. I had an accident where I tripped forward and I actually hit the pack. I couldn't control myself and I went face forward into it. Caused a little crack while this was still mounted on. So what I did was I had a bunch of uh, JB Weld plastic bonder. I applied that last night. It cures within 15 minutes. But I gave it a, about two, three hours. And then I did some sanding and I actually used my Dremel. Just, I didn't, I wasn't pushing it down. I just kind of was gliding it across, guiding it across slightly, a little bit, wearing it down. And then I had some sandpaper and I finished sanding it down. It's a pretty sm flat, smooth surface. Now this is, it's, my game plan is after I paint it, obviously is for it to the side that was damaged is going to be right underneath the main booster part right here okay so it's not going to be something that people are going to see and notice it but if you've seen my video before talking about the pack your imperfections are going to add character to the pack some people are like well no I, you know there are going to be those naysayers those people who want it to be 100% movie accurate. But again, not all the packs were 100% accurate. If you look at high-res photos of Egon's pack, Ray's pack, Winston, Vinkman's pack, all the packs had their own little differences. Plus, as I said before, these guys built these Proton packs in a dilapidated, run-down old firehouse with substandard power and facilities. So, it's going to add character to it. So literally everything is sorted. I literally have all the parts and pieces, the hardware, everything is disassembled. 
here's the uh, HGA. Some of these parts are not going to be painted, like the ribbon clamp. This is actually a little flange I got. And this is actually going to help ho keep the hose onto the cyclotron. I have my mounts. Literally everything is sorted. Speaker hardware, this is what holds my speaker onto the motherboard. Shell bolts, these are the bolts that actually secure the shell onto the motherboard itself. Literally, I went through every single little piece and sorted everything together. Booster frame. I actually got the screen mesh for the end filter. I have it sitting inside. I'm going to take it out before I paint, but in case you haven't seen my previous video, I have actually sprayed this with silver on the inside to help illuminate the inside so when the LED uh, for the vent feature fires off, it's nice and bright. I wanted to make it look as bright as possible. Okay. Now, you might be wondering, what, how am I going to secure the the little screen mesh that I have inside here. I'm probably going to tack it with, uh, I might use some E6000. I might use a little bit of clear epoxy just to kind of tack it in there. Um, I know some people have an aversion of using uh, hot glue to secure things. Um, I don't. I mean, I've done it before. And I know, let's say, hot temperatures, you know, really warm temperatures, like say in summertime, you know, 80, 90 degrees. Yeah, that could help loosen up or you get the, the smell of the hot glue. So, I mean, there's those things, those types of situations where it's not ideal. But we'll see what happens. Um, like I said, E6000, I have the Plus and I also have the regular one. I've actually used this on uniforms. I've used it for patches. You have to be careful. You have to make sure you're not putting on too much. Because too much and it can actually spread outside the area of the patch. Um, another thing is there are different types. Some of these are like there's clear. There's some types that have a, a black or a gray color to it. And some of these I actually have a scent. I had a suit where I had to wash it about 10 times to get the scent to start to fade. So this one is the crystal clear and this one is no odor so the plus is definitely one i recommend for you guys so i have everything sorted and um even though it's really it's winter time here in buffalo um it was cold today but um i actually managed to get a little bit of work done uh now as you guys have heard me say i live in an apartment complex I have a little balcony, but it's a wood balcony, so there's a little, little spaces between the boards on your balcony. So the snow was melting from the people upstairs on their balcony, and it was causing a trickling effect. Now, obviously, I don't need drip, uh, droplets of water coming down when I'm painting something, so I had to wait for that to completely stop. Now, here's my motherboard. Now, I'm going to show you guys. Now, on the inside, I drew a lot of lines as to because I was figuring out my measurements as far as the mounting brackets so um, I did go to GB fans I used a lot of, a lot of links in their in their forms to find out certain measurements ultimately it wound up being more of an eyeball type job I have a little mark right here which is where I'm going to plan to put my uh, power cell lights I'm actually using uh, standoffs to raise it up and I just have to figure out the proper point in which to posi position it and then I'm probably going to use again the E6000 or some epoxy to hold it in place. Now on the back I painted this silver the other day and then what I did was I just used flat black and it has a nice flat look this is just one coat. This is one coat here guys I don't know how well you can see this. But, I mean, this is going to have an Alice frame in front of it here. You're not, you're really not going to see much of this. Now, you might notice I have some additional holes here. Okay? 
I had my speaker holes, yes, they're not perfect, but it worked out for me. My speaker holes, I drilled them by hand, okay? Then I have the hole here, hole here is where the speaker mount uh, bolts will go through. Here and here are part of the Alice frame, okay? Actually, here and here are part of the Alice frame. These two four outer ones are for the hardware of the Cyclotron, okay? Now here, this is going to be a little port for uh, an aux cable that will go to Bluetooth. A small little round Bluetooth, about, about yay big, that I'm going to have. It's going to be something that I can recharge. It's not going to run on the, the internal PAX power. Now on the bottom here, I actually have a toggle switch and a charging port, which is going to run a town cell power, uh, power battery, which is going to be mounted... Probably somewhere right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, like somewhere right here, where you see my hand. And also using standoffs again, I actually am going to have it sit. My soundboard, my GB fan soundboard, is going to be sitting over the battery, so everything's going to be kind of centralized. We'll have the connector cable that goes over to power cell, which also has a connector from the uh, cyclotron, which is going to run up to that. I'm going to try and manage the wiring as clean as possible. And everything's going to be right there. So I'm real excited about this. I'm debating whether or not I should do another coat of black. I might just do another coat just for the hell of it. And I still have to do a coat of black that kind of goes... Let me position this here, guys. I need to do a coat of black that will, go, that will cover some of the outline here and some of the outline here. Because part of this... If I put the shell on, you're going to see the silver part, okay? So some of this I do have to paint black, so I'll probably do another coat on that. Um, the back, I I might just keep this as is, but I might do another coat. I'm thinking about it. Um, now you might say, well, if you're going to do, if you're going to spray some of this, why not just spray the whole thing? Because I don't have everything perfectly measured yet. I want to use, I want to save my lines. But really, honestly, how often do you look at the inside of a person's pack? Let's be honest. Right? Now, I might actually do a groove to mark my line permanently. I mean, I could do that with my Dremel. I could do a little groove in here to mark where I want my power cell uh, permanent, uh, permanently. And then just kind of do a nice little spray and I could do that. That's, that is a simple way to go about it. But we'll see what happens. So what do you guys think of this so far? I mean, I'm going to have my toggle switch right here. Aux, uh, not power supply, I should say. Right here at the bottom. So we got a toggle switch and power supply right there. What do you guys think? I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but also I'm a novice when it comes to electrical. And running wires and connecting things. I'm still a novice at all of that. So that's my little setup that I have right now. So um, the next step, like I said, is going to be paint. Um, now this is the flange I got. And it came with screws and also a tightening bolt that goes on the... Right here. Okay. Now I'm also going to... now. This I got off of somebody from the uh, GB groups, from the GB Facebook groups, I should say. And I'm blanking on his name right now, so let me just pull him up. I want to give him credit. He was very awesome about this, sent it out in no time whatsoever. Bear with me here, guys. Yeah, that was actually Bobby Fisher um, through the GB fans, uh, or not the GB fans, but the, um, I linked up with him through one of the uh, Facebook uh, Ghostbuster groups. Um, I mean, this is, is this necessary? No, it's not. But I think it adds a little bit of, a little bit of flavor to it, a little, little bit of uh, coolness, at least in my eyes. I like the look of it, so... I'm also one of those people who likes to use a 
ton of cap head screws when modding a uh, Ghostbusters track. Even whether it's the Spirit or the Walmart brand. So. so yeah, we have everything broken down. Once I paint it, uh, again, my plan is to do silver. And also to, again, use, I usually use the flat black Rust-Oleum. You want to make sure you give it a good shake, otherwise it's going to run. Now, I'm not too sure, but I'm debating whether or not using the semi-gloss. If you guys have an opinion about that, please leave it in the comments section below. Um, also, in the description, I, I, I put a little email address. So if you guys ever want to reach out to me or you have suggestions about future videos or criticisms, positive or negative, please either the comment section below or hit me up on that email and I'll follow up with you guys on this. Um, if you have questions about where to get some of these products, like your JB Weld, I mean, I get this at your local Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Walmart, I mean, just about anywhere you would go to get supplies. Um, I like the JB Weld two-part epoxy. I have used the Gorilla Glue in the past. Sometimes it didn't always work the greatest, but JB Weld has yet to fail me. Has yet to fail me. Now, with my battery uh, pack that I'm putting inside, I'm actually doubling up with some Velcro strips to hold it perfectly in there. Now, that's not necessary, but I'm going to do that in case I ever need to swap out my battery for a different battery. I can do that and it helps to hold it in place I've actually done that on the back of the motherboard on my spirit pack before uh, your basic velcro strips on your talon cell you slap it onto the back you can remove it you can leave it on there it works out perfectly guys so that's it for this video so this was part four we will see what happens with part five uh, as I said uh, before, I'm actually not going to be painting it here in the apartment because, well, one, I'm an asthmatic. Paint fumes, to me, not, not the greatest combination, and I don't really don't have a space in, in our apartment for me to do some painting. And we're talking 30 and 20 degree temperatures right now in western New York, in Buffalo, New York. So um, I'm going to be using a garage. And um, I don't know... If that's going to be this Saturday or this Sunday, but it may be the following weekend. But by that point, I'll be able to. Now, the, the paint that I use, it's just pretty quick drying paint. I mean, this, you're probably talking maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe about 30 minutes to roughly, I'd say about a good 30 minutes. Let Because you don't want to paint it. Oh, it, it looks good. It looks like it's dry. You want to give it time to fully dry, guys. Um, but I'm planning to do a silver or aluminum. As a primer, because I have the rust primer version of it. Um, then I'm going to do the flat black. Okay. After that is completed, then is the fun part. Then is the part where I have to tape up this shell and apply bed liner spray. Because there are portions, uh, if you go on the Benekent props page, or even the uh, How to Build a Proton Pack, Ghostbusters How to Build a Proton Pack page. There are plenty of people who will post photos, and what they do is they basically take tape, they put it around the top part of the cyclotron here. You can see where the holes are, where the eyelets are, this part right here. They also go on the side panels here, all the way around to here, to here. There's also where you have like these little brick grooves right here. They cover that up. They cover that up. They cover that up. They run a nice little strip down here. They might do maybe here and here. Basically, every spot that you don't want to be covered by bed liner spray. This section here, these right here, these up here, and these along here. Um, most of those parts you're going to tape up because one you need this area to be smooth so that when you apply your decals and labels they're going to stick otherwise you got the coarseness of the bed liner on it and they're not going to stick that well guys i also have to put a little something up here because we got the one red label that comes right up here guys 
So anywhere you're going to put a label or anywhere that is not meant to have that coarse kind of rough iron look, that's what you that's what you want to tape up, guys. Okay. So I'll probably be taping it up and then going back out to do the uh, bed liner spray. Um, like some where you have the holes here, that's not you. You don't have to do that. Like here, I mean, I'm probably going to put uh, painters tape to cover this completely. But everywhere else you can have that coarseness. It's up to you guys. There are plenty of pictures. There's even a few videos on how to do this. Um, there's one really good video by uh, Punish Props Academy. They did a build with a vacuum form. Not, not a hard resin shell like I have here. But the same principles are right there. The same parts where you're going to want to tape everything up is still there, guys. Okay? Uh, that's a great video. I have watched that. A dozen times when I was painting my spirit packs it's a great guide um, I'm not affiliated with them I'm not associated with them I'm just calling out that video because it's an amazing video it will help you guys I mean I'm planning to watch it a couple times myself this weekend just so I can kind of get everything in my head right I'm one of those people you know honestly you are your worst critic you're second-guessing yourself go with your gut go with what, what feels right guys not what everyone is telling you, but go with what feels right. And honestly, again, if you feel like you made, made a mistake, don't go smashing things. Okay? No Hulk smash. Okay? If you make a mistake, it's adding character to your proton pack. If if you're a Ghostbuster in the real world, and you're trapping ghosts, you're going to be in the worst conditions ever. Your pack is going to take some beating. Right? Not to mention, as I said before, the packs were built in a dilapidated firehouse with substandard little electrical needs. It wasn't pristine lab conditions. This wasn't built by Tony Stark, okay? Um, so these, you know, the imperfections, if something's a little off-centered, that's fine, guys. Because, like I'm always saying, it's your pack. It's your prop. You mind it how you like it. You display, your items display how you like it. That's just happens to be how I like my stuff, okay? And yes, I have painter's tape holding up my ecto calendar, but that's just what I use. <laughs> so, I mean, it is what it is, guys. So, we're getting close to that next step. And like I said before, if you guys have criticisms, you have recommendations, please feel free to leave comments in the section below or hit me up at the email address, okay? And I have the email address list. I'm going to update all my videos with the email address. So if you guys ever have a question or maybe you want to reach out to me, maybe you want to, you know, you want you want to contact me directly, feel free to do so. You know, some people might say, well, why are you doing that? I'm doing that because if, and I, you know, obviously this, this is not a huge channel. Okay. This is not a huge channel. I have about, 30 some odd subscribers so if anyone has a question about excuse me guys sorry about that um, if someone has a question about uh, the Power Ranger stuff or um, the Ghostbuster stuff the props um, I've done a couple of videos talking about health about this health change that I've gone through if anyone has any questions concerns thoughts criticisms about any of that I want you guys to be able to reach out to me Okay, I mean, when it comes to YouTube, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of communication. I mean, there's a comment section below, but I want you guys to be able to reach out to me directly. Okay, the reason why I'm doing these videos, the how to build a proton pack, you know, the road to Ben and Ken's, or the BOK as I put it, I want to give you guys as much info as possible. There's not a whole lot of instructional videos out there. And if there are some people are doing it over a long period of time because that's what they have available. Um, and honestly, I mean, there's not a whole lot in there. I'm someone who's a novice. I'm still learning a lot. I've had a few people, you know, say to me like, "Wow, you do some amazing work." Honestly, comparing to some people out there, I mean, uh, punished props. I know I will never get to where they are. You know, this is just something I do. And, you know, because I'm a Ghostbuster here in, in the Buffalo, New York area, um, you know, I just wanted to try and keep improving my, my, my stuff little by little. And that's why I'm doing this. 
I mean, this is a lifelong dream to build a full-scale proton pack so I can be out there. Um, the Backstage Future uh, pack, the RGB pack I built for my wife because she joined our group. I mean, those are simple things. And for the comments, I get like, someone will say, oh, I, I love that. But you know what? There's, for every one of those comments, there are at least 100 other people who are doing work that is 10 to 20 times better. I'm being honest. I'm not going to say my stuff is the best, because it isn't. My flux pack was thrown together in a matter of months. It was my first proton pack ever. Okay? When I was a kid, I had an upside-down backpack with some Legos and a wire connecting into it. That was my kid version of a proton pack. We couldn't afford much when I was a kid, so that is, you know, it was what it was. So, I mean, these are my first few packs. I mean, am I proud of them? Yes. Could they have been worse? Yes. Could they be better? Yes. These things happen. So, I mean, I want to share with as much as I am learning doing this process with everyone out there. So, if there is someone else who this might be their first time building a pack, you're getting that little bit of information. Maybe I'm maybe I uncovered some little small little bit of info that help, will help you make it a smoother process. Did I have mistakes with this? Yes. Is it 100% perfect? No. But which which of us is 100% perfect? Okay. So I'm going to cut it now. I think I've rambled enough. <laughs> so until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Dimension saying keep on busting. And I'll catch you on the flip side, guys. Be well and be safe.